So first of all, um, we are very delighted to have you here. So thank you so much for coming to Brussels. Thank you so much for inviting me to Brussels. I'm delighted to be here. Um, our first question would be, when we think about direct interaction with robots, um, most, most people have rather mixed feelings about it. Um, but when we think about the potentials, where do you think robots will be most helpful and at the end irreplaceable in the near future? Wow, so I think robots are a very useful technology in a lot of different areas. And what we're seeing right now is robots, which have always been kind of in factories and behind the scenes, are moving into all of these new areas of our lives. And I think there's tremendous potential in all sorts of applications that we're already seeing now, the military transportation systems, hospitals, and our houses and, and workplaces. And I especially love the way that robots can engage people. So I'm hoping that we're going to see more applications in a social context of education and health. Great. There are a lot of robots that look like humans and pets. You are working on um, the field of human-robot interaction. So should we treat robots like human and pets? What do you think about it? I think it depends because there are some situations where that's actually useful to treat a robot like a living thing. And, and it's something that we tend to do very naturally. And the, the reason it can be useful is because Again, you can engage people through doing this, and it can be a, a very useful tool in health and education and maybe in other things as well. But then you have situations where you don't want people to treat the robot like a human or an animal. For example, um, there have been stories that in, in the military, soldiers will become emotionally attached to the robots that they work with, and that can be anything from inefficient to dangerous. So it really depends on the use. Maybe. Coming back to that, what are the main challenges ahead when we think about robots and um, robot ethics, actually? There are a few challenges, I think. Uh, I know that you know, some people are, are worried about the more science fictional aspects of robots coming to kill us all, um, but I'm actually worried about some more near-term questions in robot ethics. Um, there's questions of responsibility for harm. There's questions of things like autonomous weapon systems. There's privacy issues, and there's a lot of social issues um, around using robots, which can be a very engaging and sometimes even manipulative technology to influence consumer behavior or other human behaviors in both good and bad ways. But I think we need to be cautious about some of the some of the ways in which robots could be used that aren't necessarily in the public interest. How will automation then, in your opinion, impact our society in the upcoming years? If we look at the next five years, for example, what do you think will happen? So I know that a lot of people are concerned that robots are going to take all of the jobs. Um, I don't think that's going to happen in the next five years. I think that robots are still very, um, primitive in that they can do specific things very well, but they can't think broadly. Uh, same for artificial intelligence. But I do think that since robots are coming into all of these areas where we need to interact with them more, I think we're going to see more systems being designed for this interaction between humans and robots. I think that's going to be the main change. You said it before, there are lots of different science fiction movies that um, at the end, you know, robots take over the world and conquer everything. And you already mentioned that you don't think that this is realistic. So it's not likely that something like this will happen in not the next five years, but maybe longer than that. Well, it depends on how you define longer. I mean, anything could happen in, in a very long time, but I'm not as worried about artificial superintelligence as some people are, because I don't think that we are at a place where one breakthrough could explosively make this happen. I do think that if we continue to develop the technology that decades from now, I mean, who knows, who knows what will happen, but we don't even know how such, such an artificial superintelligence would be developed. And I think that there would probably be multiple breakthroughs along the way to that. So it would be a bit easier to figure out how something like that could come about if we wait a little longer. 
Our last question was a question that everybody wanted to know, actually, because you are working and um, known for developing dinosaurs. So why dinosaurs? What is the story behind choosing a dinosaur? So I, I don't develop the dinosaur, I should say. So it's a, it's a Japanese company that makes the Plio dinosaur, but I just, it's a toy and I just really like it. I don't, they don't pay me to say that. I bought them all with my own money, but it's just a really, um, compelling robot because it it mimics a living thing in a very convincing way and it also displays pain and and being upset in a in a way that I think is very it's very easy to suspend your disbelief and and react to it so I don't know I think I think it's just a, a really brilliant toy yeah it's sad that you couldn't bring it with you but uh... they're a little delicate they're hard to travel with <laughs> they don't like to travel no. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was um, all we wanted to know for the moment, but we're looking forward to the, to the keynote and the discussion later on. Me too. Thank you so much.